All right, everyone, it's time to talk about a redevelopment that's happening up in Burlington with the uh, Burlington Town Center, which is sort of a, a conglomerate of businesses. They're actually going to be taking most of this down uh, and putting up new structures, which are considerably larger. Uh, they will have living space, not just <laughs> shopping space. Uh, overall, if, if you've spent any time in Burlington, the aesthetics of most of Burlington are very good, especially within the downtown, uh, roughly between Pearl Street to the north and, and going south as far as the downtown goes, uh, from the waterfront all the way on to the UVM campus. That whole area is, is basically fully developed. But there are still these little spots there that are less efficient than they could be, maybe less attractive, they don't quite fit in with the scenery. Uh, Burlington goes for the tourist and student-friendly scenic look, almost a European-style uh, development system. And it works well. Uh, that's why Church Street is so popular. They've got Church Street and the lakefront and, and various parks and so forth. It's rather family-friendly. Uh, it's attractive. It looks good. Uh, this is one of the, the few spots, <laughs> really, in that area that doesn't quite fit in. Uh, right now, it looks more like a, a low-end strip mall than anything else. Some of the businesses there have had, I believe, problems as well. Uh, so they're demolishing it uh, in part and then building a new structure, which has faced some opposition. Some people are like, well, we don't want this new development. Just keep it the way it is. Uh, that's the sort of backwards thinking that's holding this entire state back. Um, if they want to redevelop this particular block, then uh, I wish them well in doing so. Uh, because if you've ever spent time around it, everything else in immediate proximity, it's very, it's very scenic, and again, it has that downtown feel, but not quite the big city feel. It's like an oversized, small-town American downtown district with apartments above, businesses below, the wider sidewalks. It looks nice. Uh, it's a good place to hang out. Like it's, it's the happening place of the entire state. You don't really get that feeling. There's, there's a very limited chunk here in Rutland that feels similar, uh, right on Merchants Row and the surrounding streets. Um, there's a little bit maybe in, in Bennington or the very core of Brattleboro. Otherwise, you don't really get that style of feel. Uh, you've got some problems in Vermont cities and towns with some urban sprawl. You've also got problems with Essentially, the state or some township has declared a bunch of useless buildings to be historical simply because they happen to be old. Absolutely zero people go and gawk at some late 1800s farmhouse that's now being used as a, as a retrofitted apartment. Nobody goes and, and looks at that uh, as being important except for some bureaucrat, some, some mayor with a pet project or something like that. The idea that all old existing structures must of necessity be maintained exactly as they are is holding back development in the state. Now, I'm not saying that we should go on a free-for-all and start demolishing and rebuilding everything. It's not efficient. We probably don't have the money to do that on that kind of scale anyway. But when you have an otherwise very scenic downtown and you have this one uh, spot that has development issues, and is, is kind of, uh, let's face it, an eyesore. It's right next to the bus area and a nice park, and I believe the court is, uh, is right across from it. When you've got this, <laughs> right near Church Street as well, um, it, it's it blighted, in effect, and it's not as efficient. So I think the, the new development is basically apartments and suites above, um, businesses below. It's that more efficient model that's in use in most of Burlington's downtown, and it'll look good. Uh, that's the way that Burlington, uh, I think, should brand itself, is that sort of semi-compacted uh, uh, way of doing business, because it works. It's more efficient as far as money goes, too. It's much more efficient for a city to be modeled in such a way that all available ground-level space is being used by businesses where possible. And above that is where people are living, as opposed to maybe some weird uh, cobbled together building where you've got like a main business and then you've got a series of apartments behind it for no reason and, and uh, all of this other stuff. And Burlington should also consider investing in more below ground parking space uh, because uh, problems with traffic 
in Burlington are controlled mostly, but there are problems with traffic in Burlington at times. Uh, it's one of the few spots in Vermont where you'll find rush hours uh, in some spots uh, difficult to navigate. Here in Rutland, it's maybe a close second because it's a main route north and south and east and west, so it can get kind of congested, but then it tends to clear itself out with few problems. Uh, that's another thing they should work on simply beautifying things. There are some side streets where the, the sidewalks are a little dilapidated. They should clear that up too. Uh, and Burlington would look rather nice. Uh, it's already approach. I mean, it's uh, consistently gets billed as one of the top places to, to sort of go and be a tourist, specifically because it is scenic. And it's also safe. And that's a big benefit. Yeah, we live in a generally safe state that's becoming less safe because our government refuses to do anything substantial regarding the opiate crisis, but uh, it, it is better uh, than most parts of the country. You know, I've, I've traveled around, and uh, the general aura of Burlington is, hey, it's, uh, it's safe here, it's fairly prosperous, and it's relaxing, uh, except maybe in midwinter. In midwinter, it's uh, just cold. But that's all of Vermont, so there's nothing to be done about that. Maybe you could build below the sidewalks. So you'd have, like, underground walkways so people don't have to go out in the cold, have heating systems in there or something. It's just a half-joking suggestion. Of course, they've thought about, and there's another thing, uh, and, and this is worth maybe thinking about, running uh, uh, heating systems underneath roads and sidewalks in some of these downtown areas uh, that use solar cells mounted on the roofs of nearby buildings uh, to actually continuously supply some warmth so that you don't have to plow <laughs> in the uh, the downtown roads now, how wonderful that would be if everything if uh, you could get a foot of snow and everything would be you wouldn't even have to plow it the roads would uh, uh, prevent themselves from having difficulties might cut down on the frost heaves too we should look into that we really should here in uh, Rutland too that'd be great I don't know why they don't consider doing so. I had to just build roofs over the roads. Just have big arches and have little plots next to them with some, like, vining plants or something. You know, think about that, you know, for a change. Although it might collapse under the weight of our winters. That's about all. Peace out.